Hey, welcome everybody. This is going to be your video on C++ pass by value versus pass by reference versus pass by pointer. Lots of junk we got to cover, so hopefully you are ready. Also, apologies, I'm still kind of figuring out the light and the focus and psh, I'll get there. I know I've been doing this for a few years, but I'll get there. But don't you dare forget about our sponsor. Thank you so much. C++ Builder is the IDE of choice for rapidly building C++ applications. Utilize drag and drop visual components that are responsive and allow for cross-platform deployments. When building data-driven applications, you can bind data sources to visual components to make working with data easy. Go ahead and get started with a free trial of the Architect Edition, which will give you all of the features of C++ Builder. So whether you're a beginner just getting started or want to build enterprise level applications, C++ Builder is the tool for you. I'll leave a link in the description. So first, let's just talk about what C++ does by default and then how we can do the different variations. So this all has to deal with how arguments are passed to functions. And by default, C++ passes by value. So what that means is values are copied to the parameters. So C++ passes by value, but there is one exception, which we're not gonna get into a ton of detail, but basically C++ arrays, these things are said to decay to pointers. And basically that just means they lose a little bit of extra information around them. So you can't easily check the length of the array and arrays can be modified inside of functions by default. Meaning if you pass an array to a function, that function can modify the array and those changes will be seen after the function call. So just watch out for that. You don't have to do anything too crazy though. You're going to work with the arrays in the same way. The only thing is you're not going to have that length data like you might like. If you need that, then you can define your functions to take an additional argument of how long the array is, or you could use a data type such as a vector, which can keep track of that even when it's passed to a function. But I'm not getting into the details right now, so let's just focus on pass by value, what that means, and then some of the variations that we can do inside of C++. All right, so pass by value basically means that when we have an argument variable, let's say this is our calling code over here, and we create a variable such as x, and we assign it the value 10, and then let's say we invoke some function we created and pass in this argument x. So terminology here, this is said to be an argument. Now on the function definition side, it's gonna look something like this. We'll just say void for right now. We're not gonna to worry too much about return types, although you can return by value or reference or pointer, but let's just focus on arguments and parameters. So we'll say void work, and we'll define this with one parameter. And the name here can be the same as this here, these are two different variables. They are defined in, in different scopes, but just so we don't get anything confused, let's call this one A and we'll call that one X. All right, so in here, we could do something with A, such as saying A is 11. What exactly is going to happen here? And specifically, the part I am most interested in is right here. After we invoke this function, what is the value of x? So we're gonna figure that out. And just to continue our little definitions here, this is said to be a parameter. So when we are passing by value, which is how this is right now, by default, here's how it's gonna work. We're going to have this variable called x, and we assigned it the value 10. Then we define another variable, this parameter here, and it's called a. And that value 10 is copied in to the parameter a when we invoke the function and pass it in. Then we start at the top of the function going line by line and you can see a is replaced to 11. The function ends and we start our code down here now. And you can see x still has the value 10. So none of the changes inside of this function are seen after the function call. That is how pass by value works. It copies everything, which is usually fine for the majority of cases. And it's actually safe because we know that if this function 
is passed by value, then it's not going to accidentally change any of our data. Pass by reference, on the other hand, can change data and it'll be seen on the calling side, which can be useful, but it, it's just a little bit more dangerous if you're, if you're doing it wrong or it's changing data and we don't know that it's changing data, that's bad. So let's talk about that now and how it's gonna be different. So we'll get rid of these definitions here. I think you guys got that figured out. The scary thing here is that on the calling side, everything is gonna stay the same. So invoking a function that's passed by reference is super easy, but we cannot immediately see if it's passed by reference or passed by value without seeing this function definition. On the function definition, the only thing different is that we're going to have a reference here. So ampersand and then the variable name. So how's this gonna look like in memory? Well, we define x with the value 10, then we create this reference variable a which is going to refer to this location. Then we update a to 11, which changes here, not here. So over here in our calling code, x is now going to have the value 11. So the changes inside the function are seen outside of the function. Let's talk about some of the consequences of this. They can be pros or cons, just depending on the context. The first thing though, is that it can save memory Right now, we're just working with simple integers, so it's not gonna save us any memory. But imagine instead of working with an integer, we're working with a vector of thousands and thousands of pieces of data. We might not wanna copy that every single time we're working on a, on a new function, right? Especially, what if the vector took up 55% of our memory? I mean, that's not likely, but that's not going to work. And then also, the function can change the data. So if you want to create functions to work with data and those changes can be seen outside, then great. But you just have to make sure <laughs> you're not creating functions that aren't supposed to change data, but they actually are because you're working with references and you're dumb and you don't know what you're doing. And you can usually indicate this in the title, right? Like work, that's really super vague. If you had something like update data, that's pretty clear that, you know, this is probably gonna change something. Just be really clear with your function names and if you're in a team environment, make sure your coworkers aren't idiots and they title their, their things properly and there's good documentation. All of that proper coding junk, make sure you, you follow it. So yeah guys, I forgot to update this, but we are on pass by reference here. And now what I wanna do is I wanna talk about pass by pointer and how that's different. So. The difference between pass by pointer and reference is on the calling side, you actually have to do something different because if your function takes a pointer, you need to pass in either a pointer variable or an address. So instead of passing in X, we can pass in the address of X using the ampersand. So we know that this function is working with pointers. There's no question about it over on this side. On this side over here, we actually define this as a pointer using an asterisk. Then anytime we wanna work with that data itself, we can dereference it using that asterisk again. So this is how passing by pointer works. So let's just review. We create a variable x, we pass a pointer to x to the function. This is of type int pointer. We dereference a to set its value to 11 which changes the data in memory, and those changes are seen on the outside. So that's pass by pointer. I recommend you do pass by reference over pass by pointer, as I talked about in our video on pointers. You should generally prefer references over pointers. However, there are scenarios where you might wanna use a pointer, so you can research pointers versus references and when to use which. I'm not gonna get into all of that in this video. Coming from C, a lot of people will jump into C++ and just use pointers for everything. And one common thing with this is you would do some dynamic memory allocation and create a pointer. You could then return this pointer and work with that data. And then whenever you're done, you can free that data. 